Welcome everyone to War Thunder Histories episode 5. Today we're going to be looking at the British Chieftain main battle tank, primarily the Mark 10. As always, we'll discuss design and development, service life and how it plays in game. I hope you will enjoy. With the appearance of Soviet IS-3 and IS-4 tanks shortly after World War II, Britain began work on replacing its relatively new Centurions. Initially producing the Conqueror to serve alongside the Centurion as a heavy tank armed with a 120mm gun and also featuring very heavy armour for its time. Conqueror entered service in 1955. In 1956, Leyland Motors, who had been involved in the development of the Centurion, produced the FV4202 prototype, which was a modified Centurion hull with a new mantletless turret, becoming the basis of the Chieftain. The FV4202, which was appropriately nicknamed the 40-ton Centurion, featured a 20-pounder or 84mm gun and a semi-reclined driver's position, along with the previously mentioned features. The design came with many advantages, including improved crew protection along with a much lower overall profile to other tanks of the same era. In 1957, NATO presented a specification to its members to produce fighting vehicles with multi-fuel engines, as it was feared that diesel fuel would run out during conflict with Soviet countries. Most NATO nations would abandon this due to serious reliability issues, but Britain being Britain, decided to continue with this concept, with Leyland producing the L60 engine in 1959 which became the Chieftain's main power plant, and probably its biggest downfall, which we will touch on later. The first prototypes of what would become the FV4201 were sent for troop trials in 1959. Armed with the L11 120mm rifled gun, which was the most powerful gun on any tank at its time. It included a newly designed mantleless turret to house the new gun, a semi-reclined driver's seat allowing for a very low profile when compared with tanks such as the US M60, and two coaxially mounted machine guns, a 7.62 and a 50 caliber ranging machine gun. The design also included a fully traversable commander's cupola with a 7.62 machine gun. The prototype would have a number of issues identified, such as an excessive engine vibration and insufficient engine cooling, which led to the redesign of the rear section of the hull. This also made the suspension incapable of handling the added weight, and as a result had to be strengthened. Rubber track pads were also added to protect roads from damage. With the issues identified and corrected, in 1965 the Chieftain Mark I entered service with the British Army. However, only 40 of these vehicles were produced, and only used as training vehicles in England. The Mark 1s also were upgraded to add stowage bins to the turret, dummy stowage bins and canvas covers to the glaces and turret nose to hide the ballistic shape of the tank, and the vehicle had a relatively low top speed on road of 25 miles per hour, and a range of 250 miles. The Mark 1 was replaced by the Mark 2 in 1967, and was sent to West Germany to see active service, also replacing both Centurion and Conqueror. This was very cost effective for the British as it combined both the mobility of the Centurion and the firepower of Conqueror. The Mark II featured an upgraded L60 engine, giving 650 horsepower over the Mark I which had 585 horsepower, retaining a similar top speed and range. The Mark II also gained an NBC system, revised turret stowage, a new commander's hatch cover, and an ability to wade through deeper water. The Mark III was produced from 1970, improving the engine once again, gaining better turret stowage, a new commander's cupola, an improved auxiliary generator, and a top speed of now 30 miles per hour on road with an extended range of just over 300 miles. The Chieftain Mark III was again upgraded in 1971 to upgrade the engine further with an output of now 720 horsepower and a laser rangefinder along with a fire control system for the commander. The final production variant of Chieftain was the Chieftain Mark V, produced in 1975 which, you guessed it, upgraded the engine once again and also upgraded the MBC protection system. You may be wondering why I missed out the Mark IV and that is because only two of these were made and it was just to improve the range by adding fuel tanks. Now here's where things start to get very confusing. With the Chieftain being such a good platform for upgrades, the Mark IIs were upgraded to Mark VI's with the addition of new radios, a muzzle reference system to increase accuracy, and the 720 horsepower engine seen on the Mark V. This was a part of the Totem Pole program. This program was basically to upgrade all Chieftains to the same standard. The Mark VII was just the Mark III being upgraded to the Mark V standard. The Mark VIII was the Mark III being upgraded to the Mark V standard, along with the addition of engine upgrades giving it a maximum of 840 horsepower. The Mark IX was the previously mentioned Mark VI after going through totem pole upgrades. The Mark X was a Mark VII with the addition of the Still Brew Crew Protection Package which added a composite armour to the turret front in 1984 to 1986. The Mark XI which was a Mark VIII with the Still Brew armour. And then finally the Mark XII which was a Mark V with the Still Brew and totem pole upgrades. And yes, this is just the British way of making things very very unnecessarily confusing, I know. The Chieftain was upgraded a lot and that is because of its absolutely terrible engine. The L60, as said before, was plagued with reliability issues. It's estimated that the Chieftain throughout its service life with the British Army had only one third of the total fleet operational at any one time, with the rest undergoing maintenance. The multi-fuel concept was good in theory, but in practice it wasn't very viable. 
The L60 primarily used diesel anyway, and even if it did need to use another fuel source, the engine would require a full engineer team a total of 8 hours to convert the engine to take another fuel type. Another pretty serious issue that the L60 had was it had a tendency to leak oil and would produce an excessive amount of smoke, which obviously isn't really ideal for a combat scenario. Although the Chieftain was plagued with its engine issues, it did actually have a pretty decent gun, along with having pretty decent armour. The primary users of the Chieftain were the British Army, who used 870 across all variants between 1965 and 1995, being replaced by the Challenger 1. The Chieftain also heavily influenced the design of the Challenger 1, and you'll see that in another video. Iran, which used around 700 Chieftains, used primarily the Mark III's and Mark V's designated as Sheer, along with a handful of support variants from 1973. Jordan, Oman, and Kuwait also used Chieftains in limited numbers. The Chieftain never saw combat with the British Army, but it did serve with Iran in the 1980-1988 Iran-Iraq War. Unfortunately, the Chieftain proved unreliable, with engine issues and sluggish mobility among harsh terrain, making them very easy targets for the Iraqis. Chieftains, much like all main battle tanks, were made into a number of support variants. These included recovery vehicles, bridge layers, and such as the Chieftain Marksman, which was an anti-aircraft gun armed with two 35mm cannons and a radar guidance system. So moving on, how does the Mark 10 fare in game? The Chieftain Mark 10 is a rank 6 battle rating 9.0 British main battle tank, with a crew of 4 in a standard layout with a driver, gunner, loader and commander. The Mark 10, armed with 120mm gun as mentioned before, a coaxially mounted 7.62 machine gun and a commander's 7.62 machine gun. The Chieftain also comes with a 12 shot smoke launcher with two uses with a pretty reasonable traverse speed on the turret of 18.5 degrees per second, along with excellent gun elevation angles from minus 10 degrees to plus 20 degrees, which hopefully you guys can see from the images put on screen gives you excellent firing capabilities from over hills. With a max crew, you can have a reload rate of 7.5 seconds. Unfortunately, when compared to other main battle tanks, you have only got a top speed of 30 miles per hour on ideal terrain. However, you do have very, very good armour at 9.0, especially when in a hull down position. The upper front plate has 86mm of armour at a 68 degree slope. This equates to around 230mm of effective thickness at its thickest point. The lower front plate with an effective thickness of around 118mm, and then the sides of the hull which have between 40 and 60mm of armour with the armoured skirt. Unfortunately, much like all main battle tanks, if a round hits you on the side flat on, it will more than likely kill you. The turret cheeks with around 215mm of armour at varying slopes, plus an additional 150mm of armour from the composite panels. The turret ring with 250mm of armour at varying effective thicknesses. And then the size of the turret which have around 60 to 170mm of armour depending on where you look. The two part ammunition for the Chieftain is stored with the explosive part in the hull underneath the turret basket, and projectiles in the rear and sides of the turret with also extra stowage next to the driver. This gives you the unique advantage of avoiding ammunition cook-offs when the turret is hit. So how should you play this tank? With a relatively low top speed and a slow reload rate, you should avoid moving. Ideally find a hull down position on a flank, using the L23 APFSDS with 400mm of penetration up to 1000m, you should use this as your primary round and snipe. However, on some maps it is not possible to do this. Luckily, the Chieftain does have a gun stabiliser, so you can fire on the move accurately if you need to. As with all my tanks in War Thunder, I recommend you bring around 30 rounds. That gives you a full ready rack of 19 rounds with an extra 11 for prolonged engagements. Personally, I really enjoy using the Chieftain Mark 10. Unfortunately, at 9.0 you occasionally get up tiered to 10.0, which means fighting a lot of vehicles that can outmaneuver and outshoot you, meaning you shouldn't get too close where possible. Overall, as so long as you are aware of the Chieftain's advantages and disadvantages, it is a very fun tank with more than enough compact capability of dealing with T-64s and T-72s that you will encounter. If you are forced into close range engagements, I recommend that you stick near friendlies where they can support you and you can support them. As with all my videos, I like to suggest where you can go and see one of these tanks for real. The Bovington Tank Museum in England has at least one Chieftain Mark 11 and probably a couple more that I can't remember of that you can go and see driving. Just a disclaimer, I am in no way sponsored by the Bovington Tank Museum. I just, I enjoy the museum, I've been a number of times and they always have something interesting there. They've got vehicles from 1917 up until 1990s. 2000s, even some modern day main battle tanks. It's just, it's a beautiful museum. If you want to see basically any tank, the Bovington Tank Museum has it. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. If there's anything you want to see in the future, please leave it in the comment section below. Any vehicles in War Thunder that you think that might be interesting on this, this series, then just let me know and I will try my best to do a video on it. Uh, as I say, there's a challenger video hopefully coming in the next week or so. Uh, just need to get footage for it and write a script. And then I should have that out. 
But anyways, please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you all in the next one.